Hello Penguinauts, I'm the Beardy Penguin and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Endurance. This episode is entirely in post-commentary, mainly because I wasn't really in a mood for speaking, oh casual somersault there, when I was recording. And as such, yeah, the whole thing's post-commentary. I mean, a lot of these missions are getting pretty routine now, so you don't want to see them all in real time. So they're all sped up to four times and you've got lovely old me sitting here chatting with you, which is why... I've got a little bit of music going on in the background. I've got my boy Johann Strauss with his blue Danube waltz. Probably getting some, uh, getting some Space Odyssey vibes from this. But we are using the same vehicle here that we used to send landers to Guardian. However, today we're not sending a lander. We're sending a station to Guardian. Because, of course, we had that contract a little while ago, which we only used for a bit of extra cash so that we could send our rescue mission to Guardian. But it is actually quite a lucrative contract. And having a research station around Guardian is very beneficial to us with these mobile research laboratories that we have. All we have to do is fill them with data, hence why I'm taking loads of reports and such on our ascent, uh, and then sending the data into the lab. And once you've accumulated some data, all you've got to do is put the lab in space or on the ground somewhere, and you'll slowly research that data, generating science over time. Now, the f more difficult the place is to get to, then the more science you get. So if we put it in a low orbit of... Guardian, then we get two and a half science a day, which certainly adds up pretty damn fast. I skip through all the reusing of stuff. Yeah, we reuse our boosters, and of course, we reuse that first stage. There we are, the mighty first stage with its massive mainsail engine, and there we go, back on into orbit. Before we actually head off to Guardian, uh, we have. Wait, no, we're not doing the rescue with this mission, are we? Is it this mission or the next? I'm getting so confused because <laughs> all the missions are identical. No, we're not rescuing anyone on this mission. Uh, we're just sending the station straight to Guardian. It's the next mission that we rescue someone. And you're probably wondering what the name of the station is. Uh, I decided to name it Talos 1 because I've been binge playing Prey over the Christmas break. And I really, really enjoyed it. It's sort of Half-Life meets System Shock 2. And those are both games that I really, really loved. I wasn't a massive fan of Bioshock, I must admit. But System Shock 2 and Half-Life are both games very close to my heart, even though they were both made before I was even born. <laughs> but yeah, no, I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, game of the year for a lot of people, and it's certainly uh, certainly up there for me. Not that I even play that many AAA games nowadays. I'm honestly sick to death of AAA hype and that whole sort of culture. No, not my kettle of fish. Kettle of fish? Not my cup of tea. Yeah, kettle of fish, that... Okay, it's, it's been a long day, okay. <laughs> been doing a lot of physics revision, uh, because for those of you who don't know, I'm in my last year of A-levels, which does mean, I do need to mention this, uh, that the video output is going to decrease dramatically, uh, probably around the end of March. After Easter, it's going to get pretty hectic, and the YouTube channel is going to be very low on my list of priorities. So apologies about that, but I'm sure you can all understand that. People have always been very understanding in the past when I've had to stop making videos for a while. we will probably just be a month or so without videos while I focus on exams. But hey, you know, I say that. I'll be taking breaks from revision, um, probably not doing more than like four to eight hours a day, so... Yeah, I will have time to make some videos, just not massive projects uh, like new big series or whatever. I'll just be continuing the things that I'm doing and little sort of let's play videos like off World Trading Company and such. But here we are at Guardian, putting Talos 1 into a lovely 100 kilometer orbit of Guardian. Hopefully we won't be attacked by Typhon alien organisms. That wouldn't be particularly good and thankfully we're not an evil corporation harnessing those <laughs> monsters to make things that you stick in your brain to make you smarter or whatever <laughs> whatever the bloody company Transstar was up to in Prey. Sorry, I don't know if that's, that's not really a spoiler actually. You, you learn all this stuff in the in the opening of the game really. But anyway, I soon realised that 100 kilometers is a bit too high because we only get 1.5 science a day if we're in high orbit over Guardian. If we go into a lower orbit, a 50 kilometer one, we get 2.5 science a day, so it would be stupid not to. And once we're in our orbit, we just get ourselves a bit more science, shove a bit more data into the research lab, and then we just continue orbiting round. You see, we can actually detach that rear rocket stage that service propulsion system that managed to push us all the way out here. So once we've got ourselves our science and we've orientated the spacecraft correctly, so it's along the prograde vector, all we have to do is activate 
our retro boosters and we fire that little stage back into Guardian. Goodbye stage, you served us well. You're probably thinking, Beardy, why did you just waste all of that fuel? But uh, it's actually because we have another docking port back here. It's uh, a large docking port, well, medium docking port, because we've only got a small one at the front. So all different kinds of vessels can actually dock here. So in the meantime, we're going to launch some more missions to Guardian. I know you, you might be sick to death of them by this point, but hey, you know, the Apollo program sent six landers to the moon i mean there was apollo 13 but that didn't really land did it but yeah so i think we're i think you're getting off cheap with me just sending four i think we're all right we did actually smash one of our boosters uh on the couple on the way up i probably should orientate the spacecraft better so so they're on the sides if you get me maybe rotate the spacecraft around 90 degrees but we managed to uh recover the single booster that survived and of course our main stage we actually have a connection to it now because talos one has got some of those big antennas on them big relay antennas and talos one is relaying the signal <laughs> from the space center which is just crazy like a space station around the moon or well, one of the two moons is a better relay satellite than our relay satellite network <laughs> seriously it's kind of absurd but hey that's just the way it is uh, because i haven't actually played a career mode um, since 1.2 came out with all the communication systems so I had no idea how to set up a communications network and here we are we are actually doing a bit of a rescue here so just before we head off to Guardian just moving ourselves in and doing a bit of a rescue because of course we don't actually have that many astronauts in our space program and they're bloody expensive. And with our best scientist, Peter Kerman, and one of our two pilots, Ted Kerman, out orbiting Guardian, we need some more, uh, need some more manpower in here. And, well, I'm to be disappointed because this, this astronaut's actually a woman. So, <sighs> better fire her out an airlock. No, that was misogynistic. Let's, let's not go down that rabbit hole. Uh, she's actually a medic. You see, USI colonization adds all of these new astronaut types. I'm used to just pilot, engineer, and scientist, but she's a medic. I have no idea what that does. I'm going to have to find out. I was really hoping for another scientist. We've got Peter in that mobile processing lab. But if you have two scientists in the processing lab, you get like double the science. So, yeah, it's kind of annoying. I really wanted another scientist, but oh well, you know, what can you do? We have a pretty bog standard maneuver here. We're getting pretty damn good at this whole spin the command module around, redock to the lander maneuver. And as such, we do it, I think, in record time. Straight back around, boom, docked. Turn back around again, and then just continue the burn to Guardian. Ah, isn't it wonderful? And there we go, fire up the service propulsion system, and boom, we're heading out there. Now, Talos 1 is not a complete space station. It's just a mobile processing lab with some life support and such, uh, but it hasn't really got much in the way of habitation. And because of that... The astronauts can only be up there for 12 days before they go crazy, and that's a part of USI colonization. It makes a lot of sense, you know. <laughs> Gone are the days of sending, like, single pod missions to Juna and having a Kerbal stuck in there for three years and somehow keeping their marbles. No, they, they need room to stretch their legs, uh, otherwise they basically go on strike. Which is kind of similar to what happened uh, to Skylab, and of course Skylab was a space station launched on a Saturn V, you know, the same vehicle that sent things uh, to the moon, much like we used our same launch vehicle, the Griffin launch vehicle, to launch this space station up. Uh, but Skylab, they had such a packed schedule that they actually mutinied in space, much like my little story about Apollo 10. Yeah, a lot of NASA astronauts actually mutinying, but hey, you know, they didn't really know the effects that prolonged space travel would have on people's psyche. But yeah, Skylab, they're given such a packed schedule because, of course, the mentality is that, you know, you're in space, you should be working every day. That I think it was New Year's Day or maybe it was Christmas. It was some kind of special occasion. Maybe it was Thanksgiving. It was probably Thanksgiving, actually. I don't know. I haven't checked and haven't done my research. But essentially, they just turned off all their comms and they just stopped working for a day because they, were, they drove them into the ground and they just burnt out. They couldn't work. They told them, we need to, to rest, but they... Uh, they wouldn't let them, and as such, they just gave themselves a day off. Um, which was certainly a valuable lesson for NASA to learn, but none of those astronauts ever flew again. Same with the Apollo 10 astronauts, so you have to think, ooh, you know, came at a bit of a price. 
But uh, yeah, hopefully we won't have a similar thing with uh, Talos 1, because we are planning to expand it. We have actually got another contract to build, technically build a new space station around Guardian, uh, but we can just use the contract to just attach a new module onto uh, Talos 1 and just expand it. So with a habitation module, probably some life support recycling modules, a bunch of different things to make the, the space station more habitable. Talos 1 has got 2,000 units of liquid fuel on it actually, uh, but it's kind of useless. The contract said 2,000 units of liquid fuel, not oxidizer, so that's exactly what I sent up to save weight. Uh, so we can't fire rockets with it. We can fire nuclear rockets, but yeah, we have the liquid fuel, but not the oxidizer. So yeah, kind of pointless, but oh well. Um, I should probably get back to the mission at hand here. You can see that uh, we had to land in a specific point in this biome for our scientists to be happy. Uh, that just kind of happened to be on a cliff face. So we smashed all our solar panels and kind of rolled down the cliff face. Uh, we get Katrina out to do a very quick flag plant maneuver and we have to hurry up so you watch your step and get ourselves back into the spacecraft before it rolls off the edge of the cliff. But once we've got our science data, we're not going to hang around here much longer. And so we retract the landing legs and we get ourselves back up into the sky. Now we have enough fuel to do another biome hop. There are actually only two biomes left on Guardian, which is the secondary gorge. No, it's not the secondary gorge. It's just the just the gorge, I think. It's the gorge or the secondary gorge. There are three gorges on. There's so many gorges on Guardian. It's uh, whew, really gorging itself on biomes. I, I was trying to make a pun. <laughs> that was terrible. Absolutely horrendous. Okay, let's try and pretend that didn't happen. But uh, yeah, so there are two biomes left. We have enough fuel to jump to one of them. So yeah, we're going to need to launch one more mission. But we won't be doing that for a little while because you're almost certainly getting bored of Guardian landing missions by this point. We probably should have spiced this one up like the later Apollo missions, 15, 16, and 17, and brought ourselves a rover. Don't know why I didn't do that. We have quite a lot of wiggle room, you know, as we've shown uh, when it comes to Delta V. We, we have the Delta V to take a Grover to Guardian. Just need to m muck around with the launch vehicle a little bit. Um, but yeah, we probably should do that. Definitely on the final mission to Guardian, we're going to send a Rover, and definitely if we have to construct a surface outpost. So that won't be for a little while. Uh, yeah, but in the meantime, we're going to do some other missions. We're going to expand Talos 1, all that good stuff. You're probably wondering, actually, I didn't explain why I built a space station around one of our moons before we built a space station around Solitude. I mean, first of all, we have the capability. We have the launch vehicle, so we might as well. It's a mostly reusable launch vehicle, so it doesn't really cost us much. Second, we have the contract. And third, you get so much more science from a space station around Guardian than I would around Solitude. And we have limited... Uh, Kerbals. We can't have a space station around both because we only have one scientist. So it's pointless building a space station around Solitude when we have a contract to do one around Guardian and we can't have both running at once. So that's the main reason why we built one. Of course, in reality, it would be unheard of to build a space station around the moon before we built one uh, around Earth. But hey, you know, this isn't reality. And, you know, Kerbals have... This isn't the first space program there's been. Kerbals have, uh, you know, they colonized Juno in the first place. So, hey, we might as well be uh, a little bit more adventurous with our first steps into space. And, uh, of course, as I said, I'm all, I'm after all that sweet, sweet science. So, yeah, it made a lot more sense just to build one around Guardian. So, here we are. We've finally uh, taken off from the surface, got all our biome data. We had a contract to actually do a biome study of Guardian's Gorge. So, we've fulfilled a lot of contracts on this mission, giving us a huge amount of fun and quite a lot of science as well. So this really was a very profitable landing mission. And since we've you know, honed the whole Guardian landing thing uh, pretty much to a T at this point, maybe not the docking so much <laughs> as you can see, but uh, it's, yeah, we can do these with almost 100% reliability now. Uh, and as such, you know, we had so many contracts still left for exploring Guardian. Um, I thought it would be stupid not to do at least one last mission before we do some different stuff for a while. Again, I know it's another episode dedicated to landing on Guardian. We've given this moon a lot of love. But hey, this moon's given us a lot of love. At least that's what the uh, science report messages say. Nemesis is apparently... I can say the word now. Anthropomorph... Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> Anthropomorphism. There you go. Uh, it's when you give... Uh, inanimate objects like human emotions and such but uh <laughs> but yeah apparently guardian loves us and nemesis hates us hey you know they're like like twin brothers who are completely different yeah like loki and thor yeah there's be much better names for them wouldn't it 
Yeah. I'll get on games in there. Let's not rename them. Otherwise, I have to redo all of the science reports. Ah, that would be horrendous. Anyway, we are a little bit more responsible this time. And we actually deorbit the lander into the surface of Guardian so we don't leave space junk lying around. You can actually see Talos 1 orbiting there if you look closely. That's distant object enhancement. So you can see the little little white speck orbiting around Guardian. You can also see all the bits of space debris that we've left around. So, yeah, maybe, maybe it's not so good. <laughs> distant object enhancement just... Just <laughs> highlights all of the mistakes and errors I've made in this space program. But hey, it makes things a lot easier to see in the sky. And distant planets a lot easier to see. And we've actually decided on a mod to add the star system we're going to explore. We've, we're going to add extra solar planets beyond Kerbal. Although, of course, it's not... Well, it is Kerbal. It's Archangel now, though. But uh, yeah, the mod developer, Andrew, draws pretty pictures. He's on board with the series now. He's in the Discord. And yeah, he's pretty damn awesome. So uh, that's going to pop up in the sky relatively soon. But not actually until we get a space telescope up. But anyway, we finally land ourselves on Solitude. And we bring the mission to a close. Well, I think that last mission might just have pushed us of the boundary that allow us to finish our current tier of science nodes. We've also got over a million funds now, which is certainly welcome. Alright, so let's head into the R&D center and let's see what we can research. I think we can do all of these remaining techs. Yeah, precision propulsion. We'll buy the parts as well. Actuators, because that's the advanced grabbing unit. Maybe we could redirect some asteroids. That'd be awesome, actually. Redirecting asteroids, maybe build a, an asteroid station. That'd be cool. We don't have um, unknown object tracking in the tracking station yet, but we can certainly get it. Uh, we can certainly research actuators. Then, ooh, yeah, we're not quite going to have enough, which is a shame. So we can do hydroponics or we can do heat management systems. I don't think we're going to be growing much just yet. I'm not saying that. Hmm, might make some kind of farm in space. We start working on that kind of technology, start learning how to use USI colonization. <laughs> Might be worth doing, actually. Otherwise, it's heat management systems, which we don't really... Yeah, this might be fun, actually. Let's, let's grab hydroponics. Well, with all this money lying around, I think it's well overdue that we upgrade our space plane hangar. And we upgrade our runway. Yeah, we <laughs> haven't explored solitude as much as we should have. We've been too busy, you know, launching missions to Guardian, Nemesis and all that, but uh, I'd quite like to explore Solitude a bit more, so let's get building some planes.